What up, everyone? This is Brenton. And Jenna. This podcast is all about connecting with our autumn family in a fun and different kind of way. So turn down that CB, buckle up, and enjoy the show. It's going to be trucking awesome. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Autumn Transport Podcast. My name is Brenton. I'm the host and I'm also a dispatcher at Autumn Transport. It's good to have you guys with us tonight. We're going to be talking about brakes. Uh, we got the CVSA Safety Blitz, focusing on the brake safety blitz coming up here August 25th through the 31st. And so we wanted to get on here and talk to you guys a little bit about brakes and what inspectors are going to be looking for and what you can do to make sure that you're good to go with that. Um, drinking my water tonight out of my KAW mug, Ka Services. It's in Kansas City. There's some friends of ours. They operate a tank wash down there and also have a service center. So if you're ever in the area, I recommend that you check out Ka Services. Get your trailer cleaned out, get your truck or your trailer fixed, and get a Ka dog, a, a hot dog down there while you're waiting. Talking about brakes tonight, I'm going to welcome uh, Autumn Safety Director and the owner of Senti Transportation with us, Chris Senti. How are you doing, Chris? Good. How are you doing, Brenton? Uh, I'm doing good tonight. It was a beautiful day in Minnesota. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I was riding around uh, with one of the guys from orientation today at around 4 o'clock. It was just beautiful. It's like, let's just keep going. Yeah. Yeah, pretty exciting. We added two new drivers to the tank fleet, the liquid tank fleet at Autumn today. A couple owner operators contracted on to, to pull our tanks and work with us. So we want to welcome Tim and Bill to the Autumn family. It's always good to add a couple new drivers and meet some some new guys. Yeah. Yeah. And uh Seems like a couple of good guys today, too. Uh, did real well with the pre-trip inspections and with the driving. So uh, just get them into uh, the autumn way and learning what they need to do. And That's right. Join the mix pretty well. Hey, Mike Nolan, thanks for watching tonight. Good to see you. Hope you're doing good down there in Texas. Chris, What? Uh, we'll jump into breaks in a second, but what... Yeah. When a, when a guy signs on with Autumn, what what do they kind of go through in terms of meeting with you, and what's the the relationship like with safety right out the gate? Uh, so generally, they're with us for, uh, first thing in the morning. Uh, they'll meet with uh, Jenna when she is around. Uh, right now, they're meeting with Char while Jenna's out on maternity leave. Uh, can't wait for you to come back. Uh they uh, will meet, they'll give them their uh, med card and driver's license, take copies of that, and then safety will take them out to do their pre-trip inspection and their road test at that point. So they're with us for probably about an hour and a half or so, give or take, depending on the, how many questions the driver has uh, and depending on how long the road test takes. Like today, uh, we had a little delay. We got into Cottage Grove and they had the on-ramp to the highway shut down while they were painting it. So uh, we had a little delay during the road test, but about an hour and a half usually that they're gone uh, with us. And then they come back and they'll do a portion of orientation. And then after lunch, uh, safety will come in and do the safety orientation part with uh, distracted driving, uh, crash prevention, and hours of service. And usually with hours of service, we're going through adverse driving conditions, personal conveyance, uh, any of the exceptions, and then uh, discussing split sleeper berths if the drivers need training with that. Uh, it could be any number of things when we get done with those three main topics, depending on what the drivers uh, need help with or if there's something we want to address specifically in safety. One if. People are listening and checking out Autumn Transport. Typically, our orientation process is a one-day process in the office. So you go through the things like Chris just shared with safety, and you meet with a recruiter or someone filling in for a recruiter who's who's gone. But uh, you're usually in and out of the office in one day, take you out for lunch with whatever division you're going to be joining, whether it's hoppers, liquid tanks, pneumatics, get to meet the dispatch team a little bit, have a meal with them, and then we get you get you out and try to get you trucking right away. 
So I um, want to invite anybody tonight, if you have questions as we're talking about breaks, go ahead and leave a comment. Chris and I will try to get to those. I'll let Chris answer them because I'm not the break expert. Uh, I'm just running the tech here, but Chris is the break expert. So we'll give uh, we'll get your questions to him and, and Chris can answer them. But what is this uh, safety blitz thing here, this break blitz? Um, Chris, I, I wanted to pull up here. Let's see. There we go. No, we can even do this. So on the um, CVSA website, which is what I got on the screen here, it says that the CVSA break safety week is scheduled for August 25th through the 31st. Mm -hmm. So um, this says that the Commercial Vehicle Safety Alliance has announced the August 25th through the 31st as the dates for this year's Brake Safety Week. Brake Safety Week is a commercial motor vehicle and driver inspection and regulatory compliance enforcement initiative. Man, that's a lot of big words. Chris, break that down. <laughs> what the heck is Brake Safety Week? Uh, what they're looking for is the safety of the big trucks on the road when it comes to brakes. Uh, brakes, lights, and tires are the top three violations at every roadside inspection. Uh, they outpace all the rest of them by quite a bit. Uh, and brakes are the number one things that can contribute to an accident. If you don't have them, you're going to be in an accident, uh, yeah. whether it be single vehicle or multi-vehicle crash. Uh, so they want to make sure that as an industry, we're complying with those regulations and have safe vehicles out on the road uh, when it comes to the brake systems. And uh, one of the questions I always ask drivers in orientation, so if you end up in orientation, here's one of your answers to the test, is what's the number one reason we do a pre uh, and post trip inspection? And the answer is safety. And it's not only just the motoring public around us, but as drivers, they need to remember their own safety too, uh, because it could be uh, they could be out in the middle of absolutely nowhere, uh, brakes fail, steering components fail, whatever it might be. That's going to be a bad day for them. Uh, so you know we want to remember that it's their safety included. Well, further down on the on the page that I had shared earlier here, let me pull this back up if I can. It says why conduct brake safety week. And uh, it reads, brake-related brake violations comprise the largest percentage of all out-of-service vehicle violations cited during roadside inspection. According to the FMCSA 2023 vehicle violation data, six out of the top 20 vehicle, vehicle violations were brake-related. So this is uh, a big thing here, like you mentioned, Chris, and something that it's important for drivers to be thinking about and checking. Talk more about those pre and post trip inspections. What should drivers be looking for, especially related to brakes when they do those? So with brakes, uh, first things you should be looking at is lining, brake lining thickness or pad thickness. With some of the uh, disc brake systems, it's, uh, it's a lot harder to check the thicknesses. Uh, but I've learned you can stick your phone in there and kind of snap a picture of it. Uh, sure. to give yourself a little bit better visibility than trying to, I know with me trying to get my fat head in between the wheel and the, the rotor in there and where the uh, caliper is, it's kind of difficult, but. Uh, that it, wasn't, that wasn't something that you could do years ago. Just that's a good little hack with today's technology. Yeah, exactly. You know, your cell phones come in handy. Hey, all right, cool. Uh, because yeah, you, you put it in there, you can either do a video or just stick it in there and try to take a picture of it. Uh, some of them are pretty nice where the wheel offset allows you to be able to actually see in there and see the, the pad thickness on the drums or on the uh, rotors. But, uh, you know, look at the condition of the drum and the rotor is there excessive rust on it, which would indicate that it's not functioning properly? Are there deep gouges in it? Uh, is there metal to metal contact somewhere? Uh, lining and pad, uh, not only are you looking at the minimum thicknesses, but you're also looking at the condition. Is it contaminated from a wheel seal leak? Is it cracked? Is it missing? Uh, you know, I belong to a Facebook page, the Iowa Motor Carrier, uh, enforcement and they've posted pictures on there where on the two uh, 
uh, linings, one of the linings is missing. So it's only functioning on half the, uh, the lining that it's supposed to be functioning on. Uh, you're going to be looking at the brake chamber, uh, the stroke of the brake chamber, uh, making sure that's properly mounted and secured, uh, that there aren't any uh, non-manufactured holes. Uh, Brenton asked that I do a show and tell. So looks like a normal brake chamber here. Uh, but when you look at it like this, it disappears. Got, oh, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> so this is considered uh, an out of service. So I actually use this for training uh, with dispatch because it's a nice thing to be able to look at the outside of the brake chamber. Uh, but it's also be able to, nice to be able to see what the internal workings are, to see the spring, to see the diaphragm. Uh, to see how all of that works on the inside. Uh, hey, Gene. Hey, nice Gene. To see you here too. Um, you're going to be also looking at uh, like the slack adjusters, making sure that they're functioning. Uh, you know, if it's a drum system, you're going to be looking at slack adjusters. And not only are brakes a visual, but it's also a hands on part for inspecting too. Uh, if your brakes are released, you know, if it's not a parking axle brake, you can reach down and actually pull on the slack adjuster uh, to see how much travel it has. Uh, the easiest ones to do are your steer axles. So when you got your hood up doing your inspection, you can go ahead and grab that slack adjuster and pull the push rod and see how much travel it has. Um, you know, so that's a lot of that's a lot of stuff, Chris. And drivers are supposed to be checking all that stuff every day. Yep. Yes, sir. It's one of those. Uh, I did a pre-trip training with uh, a company and I told them, you know, it took us 32 minutes to go through uh, a pre-trip with me explaining everything. And the the owner of the company says, Do you expect my guys to be out here for a half hour to 45 minutes every day inspecting this? I said no, uh, because the first few times as you're learning it and trying to get your routine down, it does take a, a bit of time. But over time, you're going to become uh, faster with the process as you get it down. You remember what your uh, process is going to be. And the more knowledge you have, you know, the quicker you're going to be able to look at something and go, yep, it's good, it's good, it's good, and then move on to the next. Uh, whereas when you're first learning, you're questioning yourself a little bit. So you're taking a little more time. And just trying to get that initial process down takes a little bit of time. Yeah, I, I suppose it's like anything. The more you do it, the more comfortable you become and the easier it is, the faster it goes. But that is a, a, a lot of stuff that you just that you just rattled off there. And um, I, I guess it could be kind of overwhelming. A lot of that stuff are those things that could go at any moment or is it stuff that sort of you should you can kind of watch and see that it maybe it's deteriorating a little bit over time and and certain things you just kind of keep your eye on or, you know, is it stuff that just one day it's just busted? Yeah. So the majority of the stuff is a wear down over time, like the lining thickness, that's an overtime thing, but a crack break lining usually happens, you know, like, Oh, hey, it was fine yesterday. And today it's done. Um, you know, we had that with one of the trucks that uh, we had here quite a bit that we we're just using for road tests. Well, I inspect it every day before we take it on a road test. And one day I went out, did my inspection. Hey, you've got a cracked brake lining now. Uh, but the majority of it, you know, like your hardware could break off, uh, especially up here in Minnesota. We refer to rust as Minnesota Loctite or the magic disappearance uh, because you have stuff that will corrode away with rust, uh, things like that. That's going to be a keeping an eye on, but then. Like, okay, it's doing okay, and then one day it might be gone, hardware especially. Uh, stuff that is like a pot metal or something that's going to corrode away much faster than something that's stainless uh, or aluminum. So uh, the majority of it, though, is just watching over time. Okay. And you said you do a pre-trip you do a pre -trip before every time you even take a truck out of our yard, huh? 99% of the time, I will say yes, there are occasions where I don't. Uh, if I inspect it the night before and I'm taking it down to the shop because of the violations, I'm not going to 
necessarily, I don't want to say waste my time, but I know what the violations are on it and it's going to get repaired. Um, but 99% of the time, yes, every truck I leave that yard with is getting inspected. I just want to say if anybody has any questions for Chris, go ahead and drop them in the comments anytime. He's happy to answer your questions. I think it's a good to remind us again, you know, even if it does take that 20 minutes or 30 minutes while you're kind of developing your routines to go through your truck and to go through your brakes. The big reason for this, again, the main reason is safety to make sure that your vehicle is, is safe to go down the road. Um, light empty or loaded, you're still a big, heavy truck and you have the opportunity if you're in a, in an accident to cause quite a bit of damage. And so this stuff isn't just, Hey, I'm just going to pencil whip the paper or, hit my log and say I did my pre-trip and just skip everything and not do it because you're putting yourself at a major risk. You're putting other people at a big risk and uh, it's not worth doing. So, well, during break week here, Chris, do you have an idea uh, what are inspectors really going to be looking for? Are there some, some key things that drivers should have in the back of their minds? Yep. Uh, they are going to be focusing a lot on the brake lining. Uh, the thickness, the condition of it, is it cracked? Um, and the, I'm trying to remember what the other thing that they were looking at is. Uh, but the the first thing it mentioned was the brake lining. What was it on that document, the other thing? There was two main focuses of it. Yeah, let's see here. The focus will be on the condition of brake linings and pads. Brake lining and pad issues may result in a vehicle violation and could affect the motor carrier safety rating, which is yep. a big deal. And I will uh, give you an example. One of uh, my customers just uh, with, with, well, is going through an audit. And one of the first things, uh, well, not that's exactly first. right, Firm. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you, Chris, but oh, Firm yeah. is exactly right. Overwhelming, the, it can be to check everything, but well worth because you and others in accidents that could happen if you're not taking care of that stuff. So that's a good reminder. Hey Fern, what? it's good to see you out here. Yeah, hey Fern, thanks for thanks for watching. So, yeah, Chris, tell, tell that again. You were one of your customers had an issue. Uh, they were going through a DOT audit, and part of the audit process uh, was that the auditor came out and performed a level one inspection on uh, two of their trucks, and one of the main focuses was brakes. Uh, all the brake measurements, uh, the condition of the linings, the drums all of the mechanical parts uh, because they had a higher out of service percentage due to vehicle maintenance issues, uh, which happened to be brakes. So uh, when you're talking about affecting a company's safety rating in that particular case, if he would have had more out of service, that would have put them at a very high out of service rate, uh, nearly a complete percentage, if you know what I mean. Um, but thankfully, they went through with no out of service violations. So their out of service rate had gone from just over 50% down uh, considerably due to the cleaner inspections with no out of service rates. And I'm trying to remember what you said was it 25 or 26% of all out of services at scales or at inspections are brake related. And when they say brake related, there are many different categories you can get violations with with brakes. Uh, you know, it's not just the lining thickness, it's the operation. Uh, one of the more interesting things I'd be, I've been becoming familiar with and learning about is PBT. And yeah, that, that stands I, for performance brake testing. I saw that on here. It says that um, some jurisdictions have this performance brake testing and we'll be using them during brake safety week. What the heck is PBBT? PBBT? Yep. Performance based brake testing. Uh, we're not talking peanut butter toast here. This is, I call it like the anti dyno. You know, if we're familiar with what a dyno is, you hook up your car, you get it on the spinner, you rev up your car as high as it'll go and that'll give you the reading for horsepower. Well, this is just the opposite. It's going to spin your axle and then the driver engages the brakes and it's going to measure the performance for stopping. Okay. And 
you know, it, it can be hauled around on a trailer. Uh, some of these mega coops that they've been building, build them right into the floor in the, in the big barn that you go into. Uh, so it's a matter of what that facility has for the PBBT. And let me just get some of the specs here and then I'll explain what we learned about it in a uh, safety meeting with, uh, with Captain Olson from the Minnesota State Patrol. So, uh, with so it says braking force as a percentage of gross vehicle or combination weight. Uh, so this one is uh, all other property carrying vehicles and combinations of property carrying vehicles. Um, so that's talking, you know, in the beginning, it talks about the smaller ones like 10,000 to 26,000, 26 to X amount of weight, and then says all others. So braking force is a percentage gross vehicle weight. It's 43.5%. Uh, deceleration in feet per second, 14. Application braking distance in feet from initial speed at 20 is 40. Uh, emergency applica brake application, initial speed at 20 is 90. A lot of confusing numbers. What does that mean? Yeah, I'm, I'm lost, to be yeah. honest. I'm lost. So when you step on the brake in the truck, how effective is each wheel end at stopping that vehicle? Okay. So when, when I first heard about this probably two years ago, I'm like, well, either the brake works or it doesn't. Well, I've learned a lot since then where there's things that can affect how efficient that brake functions. So we know a wheel end is the end of each axle that's considered a wheel end. So what does that brake on that wheel end, what's the efficiency of it? And the example that they used was that this trucking company, uh, they had actually got it started with infrared testing. When the truck pulled into the scale, they have the, uh, the sensors for infrared reading temperature. And all of the wheel ends except for one was red. And it should be red because it's generating heat when you're coming in and stopping. Right. This was green showing that there was no heat there. So, so then they the put it wasn't on, engaging. Correct. So they put it on the PBBT and they're like, there's only, I think it was like 15 or 20% braking efficiency on that wheel end, which is hardly anything. Yeah. And they couldn't find anything that would account for it on a visual inspection. So they took it into a shop and when they took the system apart, somehow uh, a wasp nest got inside of the airline and was stopping full airflow to that wheel end. Really? A wasp nest? Yep. Got into the air system in the trailer. I'm assuming through a glad hand uh, and it made its way into the system and it was clogging the airflow to that wheel end. You would have never known that unless it was for the PBBT. Sure. Because when you're just looking at it, yeah, it functions. The, you know, all the measurements are correct, but the proper airflow wasn't uh, accounted for. So when they replaced that airline with the wasp nests in there, it came out normal. How, how's the driver supposed to check his airlines for wasp nests? Good question. Ain't found an answer yet. <laughs> uh, that that's one of those that would be like, go buy a lottery ticket. Yeah, you're the guy that got caught for a wasp nest inside of an airline. That, um, I have no idea because that's something that would only be caught with something like the PBT or the uh, infrared system saying, "Hey, there's a problem here. We don't know what it is, so you're going to have to go take it apart." Uh, it wasn't a. Uh at a scale or anything like that. But when I was in Colorado about a month ago with my son, we drove the road up to the top of Pikes peak and on the way back down to, I think it's a 16 or 19 mile road that winds up the side of the mountain and takes you to the top and about a quarter or maybe a little bit around halfway down, they have a little station where you have to stop and they have a ranger out there that's infraredding everybody's brakes, taking temperatures making sure that the brakes aren't overheating so that you can get the rest of the way down the mountain and actually saw them tell one car in front of us in line that they had to go, go park and, and let the brakes cool off for a while before they continued down. 
Yeah. You know, I, I didn't learn this till quite a bit into my trucking career. Uh, I, you know, I see our guys on here have lots of experience. Uh, do you guys know why when the, uh, the brakes overheat, when you stop and let them cool down, uh, why you may not be able to drive after they cool down? So when the brakes overheat and you stop and you let them cool down, why can you can you not always move again? That's what you're saying. Correct. Why would it? Why would a situation arise where you you can't release the brakes and continue drive on once they're cool, cooled down? Because you think, well, they're cooled down, we should be good to go. Uh, and it's only a case with drum brakes. It is not with disc. It's only with drum. And it has to do with heat. Yeah, I mean, I'm guessing it it probably has something to do with the way that heat may, is going to make maybe something expand. Yep. So what happens is with the drums, you have the metal drum, and when you heat it, it expands. And with automatic brake adjust, uh, slack adjusters, it's going to screw out and continue to expand those shoes to meet that drum. But okay. after a while, it can't expand it anymore to meet that drum. And that's where brake fade comes in. I well, haven't heard of that. What's brake fade? That's when you go to step on the pedal and there's nothing there in a brake drum in a drum system because you've heated it up enough where that drum is now so expanded, you can't, the slack adjuster can't adjust enough to get to it. So you have no brakes and that does it as it heats up. So that's where the fade comes in because it's not an immediate thing. It's a fade, fade out. So then you get stopped say, okay, I'm at this, I'm at uh, mom and pop's diner. I'm going to go in for some coffee and we'll just let the brakes cool down. Uh, you get there, and all of a sudden you go you go to release your brakes, and it won't go anywhere. Hmm. Being a typical truck driver, we get out and check our airlines, make sure some jerk didn't put quarters in between it. <clears throat> um, and, you know, everything checks out, but you can't, you release the brakes and nothing happens. Well, what happens is that slack adjuster was trying to push those linings out, but now the drum cooled down and, and constricted back to its normal size. So being as it shot those shoes out so far trying to meet the drum, now the drum is actually holding tight to those linings. So okay. then you'd actually have to get somebody out there, or if you're, um, if you're able to yourself, you have to be certified, you can back off those linings and then readjust them to the proper uh, adjustment, uh, which depending on the system, how you do it, a lot of guys back it off, screw it down until it gets tight, and then back it off half or three quarters of a turn. Uh, but that's why you may not be able to release your brakes if you've had fade. You get stopped, that drum is constricting again back to its normal size, and it won't let go of the linings. Gotcha, gotcha. <clears throat> well, Chris, I wanted to share this for people. Um this is on the CVSA website. Uh, so guys, you can go there, guys and gals. Uh, you can go there and you can check this out yourself. Um, they have this little document, 10 brake lining and pad tips. Um, see if I can pull it up so that I can see it a little bit better here. Uh, I can't. All right. Well, anyways, um, I would recommend that you guys go there and check this out. Kind of gives you 10 different things to, to look for. What Chris, what are you telling drivers? I know you sent out a message to our fleet earlier this week just talking about this upcoming check, and I think you attached a, a PDF, a flyer of some sort to that as well. What what are you telling guys that they should really be looking for? Uh, one of the things that's been coming on lately uh, that I've been seeing a little more in our fleet is contaminated brakes. Uh, one thing that will get you the contaminated brakes is a wheel seal goes out and that wheel seal will leak down onto the shoes. And then once it builds up in the shoe, then it'll spill over into the lining. And the theory behind brakes is friction. You need friction between that lining and that drum to stop the vehicle. Right. Well, if you put oil in there, 
guess what happens to your friction? It's gone. Uh, so your vehicle becomes, uh, le it becomes unsafe because now you have less braking efficiency. Hey, Jeff. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, Jeff. Yeah. Um, run off in case emergencies. Yes, they do, Fern. Um, yeah, that's, go out, those are scary. Every time I see those, I'm just like, man, I hope I, I never see anybody have to use one of those things. Yeah, I was watching YouTube the other day, uh, and they showed one. It was, can't remember if it was a Martin truck or who it was, but they were maybe 10, 20 feet from the very top of the ramp, and the caption said, high score. Uh, that's one that you're uh, going to need a new set of pants after you get done that ride. Yeah, uh, that's, that's the truth. Hey, what's Char talking about here, Chris? Remember, even a shop can cause violations. Not yep. a shop. They always do perfect work when they fix stuff. <laughs> uh, so that's one common one is that second way is wheel contamination from a wheel seal. Well, when a shop greases the truck or trailer, uh, you have some uh, shop guys that are very meticulous. They grease it. They wipe everything off with a rag. So it looks all nice and pretty. By the way, those are my... Uh, guys that uh, I just love because I have OCD. So when they make it look pretty, I'm always happy. And then you got the guys that just hook it up. And if they got a, a mechanical one, they're just pumping away. Or if it's an electric, they'll just sit there and count to five, whether it needs it or not. And all of a sudden you've got a big grease glob that will either fall off because it either didn't go into the Zerk or they had it coming out of the Zerk and then it falls on top of the brake shoe. Hmm. Well, we all know you know, we just talked about uh, brakes heating up. When grease gets hot, it becomes liquid or it'll start to melt. And then you've got a contaminated brake lining once it reaches the linings. And you can tell when it is contaminated because you'll see that kind of a wetness look. Uh, you'll be able to see where the color change in the lining is. And once it's contaminated, uh, some of these shops say, well, you can just put it in the washer and, you know, clean all that off. If it's really, really tiny, maybe, but if you got half of that uh, lining contaminated, just get new ones because okay. uh, you want that efficiency there. And new brake linings are a lot cheaper than a claim. For sure. All right. Anybody else got any questions for Chris about brakes and the, the upcoming brake safety week? Again, that's happening August 25th through the 31st. Um, they're going to be have more inspectors out there on the roads. They're going to be pulling you in for more inspections. Chris, doesn't Adam have a program to reward drivers for clean inspections? Yes, we do. Uh, for a clean level three, we give a $25 gift card for a clean level two, it's 50. And for a clean level one, it's a hundred. So, I mean, nobody really wants to get inspected or go through the, the time of that, even if you're a guy who takes great care of your truck, I mean, it, it costs you time uh, in between loads or making that next delivery, but there is a little incentive for you to run a, a clean truck and to spend a little time doing your pre-trip, especially during this week. You know, we don't want to ever say like, oh, it's brake safety week. So now make sure you're checking your brakes. Like this is something that you should be doing every day. You should be and remember the reason behind it. It's for safety. Um, we don't do the pre-trip in case we get inspected so that we get a gift card. Um, but it is something that you should be doing every day. And I guess the truth, though, is that they are going to be looking for things a little bit more closely and a little bit more often. So it is especially important to be really focused on it for the next week. Yeah. And just keep that in mind. If you are pulled in and inspected, brakes are number one, but they're not stopping at brakes. If they see any other violations, they're, they're going to take those two. That, that is a great reminder. Um, we had talked on a previous podcast, Chris, about how you can avoid being inspected. Mm -hmm. Um, do you have any, any tips on that? Things that guys can do that, um, uh, maybe will that inspector will maybe choose to just move them on um, a little easier than they might somebody else. How do you not make yourself a target? Uh, num I will give you the top three reasons. Uh, number one is speeding. 
uh, which was our last uh, live cast or live stream, uh, which I want to say, drivers of autumn, you're doing awesome. Uh, we've had a lot of conversations the end of last week and uh, so far this week, and you guys are doing awesome. So thank you. That was um, our discussion on speed gauge, which uh, that yep. video is on YouTube. So any of you that didn't see it uh, or didn't get a chance to to like it or subscribe to the YouTube channel, go do that. But uh, yeah, that's what that's what Chris is talking about there. Oh, Fern's got a great tip to get through inspections. <laughs> bring coffee and donuts. No, that's <laughs> what you bring to your safety director when he calls you up for a refresher training. <laughs> uh, Jimmy Guest, thanks, Jimmy, for watching here tonight. This is good to know. TA Truck Stop giving free brake inspections. Yep. So if you got time. Um, you're going to park at a TA or something like that. Anyways, go get your brakes, brakes inspected. It's free. Thanks, yeah, Jimmy. I, I believe when they do uh blitz week, uh, I want to say some of the TAs do free mid trips, yep. uh, mid trip inspections. So you can go through there. So use, use your available resources, but uh, back to not getting yourself cut in at uh, speeding use of your seatbelt. Uh, you know, making sure your seatbelt's on there, uh, and low hanging fruit. So, some drivers may not understand the difference between being inspected and being scanned. Uh, I didn't until I don't know, it was like 2004, 2005. Uh, it was during the blitz week, uh, the normal blitz, the 72 hour. Uh, I pulled into the scale, uh, there was an officer just before the scale. He said, okay, driver, stop. I rolled my window down and I said, okay, what do you want me to do? He goes, turn on all your lights and step on the brakes. Turn on all my lights, stepped on my brakes. He walked around. He said, have a good day, driver. Huh. And I said, don't I get my report? He goes, what report? I said, my inspection report. I get a gift card. You know, this was <laughs> with the carrier I was at at the time, gave you $100 for a clean inspection. Sure. And uh, he goes, I scanned you, driver. This wasn't an inspection, so get going. I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, you know, they're just looking for low-hanging fruit. Do you got any lights out? Okay, well, let's pull you over. What else you got going? Uh, also, it uh, some drivers say no, but a clean truck means a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> when I worked for one carrier, I drove a rickety old International 8600. Uh it was mechanically sound, but boy, it was ugly. The thing had been ridden hard. Uh, it belonged to a nursery, so, you know, a lot of uh, hard work. But as soon as I got out of that truck, which was a regular inspection, I loved it. You know, hey, beer money, yay. Uh, but as soon as I got into a brand new truck, kept it washed, I got probably a quarter of the inspections I used to with the old ratty, old looking truck. Sure. Um, officers have said, if you pull in and your dash is full of garbage, uh, if you're not going to take the time to clean out the garbage off of your dash, you're probably not going to take time to maintain that vehicle or do a lot of inspections. So those are just some of the tips to help keep yourself on the right side of, uh, inspections or out of them. Yeah. I think that's, that's a great tip thinking about that low hanging fruit and especially just having a, having a clean vehicle goes a long way. I mean, like you just said, if you spend the time to throw your trash away and keep your stuff looking good, you're probably going to care enough to spend the time to fix stuff that needs to be fixed and stay on top of your maintenance and all that stuff. Um, probably smelling, smelling good too. We've had a couple trucks come back to us uh, for reasons or one or another that guys have, have moved on from our company and the truck just stinks and it's gross and, and stuff like that. And I can't imagine if an inspector opens up that cab door or gets around that driver and everything just reeks in there that they're going to be in a real good mood and, and likely to give you a free pass. I mean, unless it's so bad that they can't handle being around you at all. But if you're living like that, you got a whole nother problem. Yeah. Uh, there's been a few trucks uh, that were returned where I had to move them and I'm like, I need a shower. Um, you know, so if you get it kind of into that range, clean her up and, uh, you know, it, it doesn't take much. If, you know, if you guys need help with it, let us know. Uh, I've helped out drivers in the past. Uh, we get it. Sometimes times are tough, uh, but more than willing to help you out with that. So, um, yeah, the, the truck, if, uh, 
if I can smell your truck before I see it or when you're passing it, I can smell the inside. We do have an issue. <laughs> uh, and yes. officers will make it known. Yes. Yes, that's true. Well, uh, one more chance here. If anybody's got uh, any questions to ask Chris before we let him hop off and get back to his night. Uh, Char, those are the tetanus shot trucks. Isn't that the truth, man? Um, and for and reminding for a lot of these guys, your truck is your home. Take care of it. I mean, yeah, that's a great, that's a great point. You know, what sort of condition do you keep, keep your home it says a lot about you and, and the type of worker that you are and, you know, the likelihood that you're going to get, that you're going to get inspected. So just, you know, kind of keep that stuff in the back of your mind. Yeah. We always talk about, you know, in the industry, I'm involved in a few truck shows and whatnot. And we're always talking about take pride in your ride. Well, take pride in your ride and yourself uh, because we are in a professional industry. Uh, 99% of the drivers out here are, well, I'm being a little liberal with the percentage, but we got a lot of professional drivers out here. Let's keep that pride in our industry, pride in our ride, pride in ourselves, because then that's a better uh, front that we put up for the general public. That kind of makes me think of one question, Chris. Um, we mentioned earlier that out of service things can, can affect your uh, motor carrier safety score. Uh, why why should a driver care about that? Like, so what if he gets gets a a violation? I mean, how does that fit? Hurts the company really? I mean, what's the impact that that has? So. Uh... If you get an out of service inspection, you might think, well, it's just one thing. It's only one inspection. But what if half of your fleet said, well, I only got one out of service inspection? Well, for each inspection, you're rated on your out of service percentage. Uh, national average for vehicle, I want to say, is 22%. And for driver, it's 6%. Uh, once you go above the national average, your insurance takes note. Uh, some of your customers will take note. Uh, your, um, depending on what you're hauling, like with hazmat, uh, some customers won't accept above the national average. Uh, once you hit 50% or greater out of service rate, the DOT says, we're going to come visit you, uh, wow. whether it be a focused or a general audit. And as I'd mentioned, your insurance company takes note. Well, if your insurance company takes note and they say, um, you know, hey, you've got a 60% out of service rate due to X uh, basic. If you don't get cleaned up, we're going to up your rates or we'll just drop you, uh, which I saw with one carrier, uh, their vehicle maintenance uh, started to go up drastically. Uh, and just before it hit the threshold, their insurance company came to them on a Wednesday and said, we're dropping you on Friday. Get out. And they had to go find a new insurance company at a uh, five digit increase in premiums. And I'm not talking 10,000. It was much higher. So wow. that could be a consequence. And with Autumn being all owner ops, you guys like to have cheaper insurance. Uh, so if we're getting a lot out of service, our insurance, uh, you know, they have options they can do to make us comply or up our rates or just drop us. So just because you think, well, it's just one out of service, I'm only one driver. Well, if a lot of those little one out of service, one driver type things add up quickly. And yeah. the DOT can put you out of service. Uh, what they will do is if you're uh, out of service rate is too high. They come in, they will do a compliance review. And in that compliance review, if they find too many critical and acute violations, they can either give you a conditional rating or they can give you an unsatisfactory. And what unsatisfactory means you have 15 days to send in compliance uh, paperwork showing you're bringing your program into compliance. And if it isn't done by the 60 days, then at that point, you have to cease all operations, regardless of where the vehicles are. So you could have trucks spread out through the country as soon as you're declared out of service. Drivers are finding a plane ticket home because they're not yes. bringing the truck home. 
So you're you're working for the good of yourself, but also for the good of your brothers and sisters out there on the road for the entire for the entire autumn family. Mm-hmm. And uh it has I I'm learning it and Chris, I don't know if you know this, but I, I am been doing some reading that um customers and brokers and stuff like that, they have access to some of that safety data for companies and what certain scores and ratings. And if your scores are too low, yeah, those customers might say you're too risky of a carrier to work with and give loads to somebody else. And in in the environment that we're in, uh, guys know that freight can be tight at times. You can't be giving away customers or opportunities for new business because you're not taking care of your truck uh, or a bunch of guys on your fleet aren't taking care of their trucks and it's bringing the, the score down for everybody. Yeah. Uh, one, I had a customer that uh, their customer uh, called them up and said, we can no longer do business with you. Your out of service percent is above the national average. Uh, you're at 24%. And we need you down below 22. So they dropped all of their business and it was not a small portion of this carrier's business. So they had to wait and do some additional work to get that below so that they could call that customer back. Okay, we're down where you want us. Come on back. So, uh, you know, if that happens too much, too many of your customers say that, then think about, you know, at Autumn, all the other 145 families out there that are being affected by one driver's decision. Yeah. Yeah. So we, it's the 19th year. You got six days before this brake safety blitz happens. Uh, Pull Jimmy's comment back up here about the TA giving free brake inspections. Um, Can you pull up uh, Jeff Strix too? Yes. But also like Char said, even a shop can cause violations or miss them. So don't, even if you're getting that free brake inspection, you still need to be doing your own, keeping an eye on things. Shars or Jeff's comment here. Yeah. Yep. Uh, every, every single officer inspector I've ever spoken to says your inspection is going to go the way your attitude is. So you open the door, roll down the window and you're like, what the hell are you pulling me over for? Ain't you got better things to do? Your level three or two probably just went to a level one. And then it's going to turn into that Facebook post where the guy's going, sir, it's been an hour you've inspecting. I'm sure you're not finding anything. And the officer responds, don't worry, I will. Yeah, right. Uh, We had one. It was uh, when I was working for a carrier, uh, the (laughs) lady going through the inspection uh, got kind of rowdy with the officer, had a poor attitude. So he wrote her up for not having washer fluid in the reservoir. And that is a one point violation. And that's the only time I've seen that ever on a inspection. And it was due to the driver arguing with the inspector. Yeah. So be professional. You see the videos online, you know, with the, the police and I, I have a a brother who's a, a police officer and, you know, just the way that they can be treated. They're just out there trying to do their job, just like you're doing yours. Your job is to drive the truck to get load from point A to point B. Their their job, what puts money on the table or food on the table and money in their bank account is to work at the scale house or do the inspections as truck comes in. And, and I think it all kind of goes back to the golden rule, right? Treat others the way you want to be treated. That officer comes up to you, you, you treat him how you want to be treated. You you want to be treated well. You want to be treated with patience and kindness and grace. You got to offer that to him uh, to, right from the get-go. Yeah, and, you know, most of the people that know me know my sense of humor and some of what I talk about state patrol. We had a driver going through Ohio the other day, and the he had a three-minute violation on his logbook. And the officer says, I'm not worried about three minutes. I'm not writing you on three minutes. It was so refreshing to see that and hear that because there, there's officers out there that are trying to do a good job. Mm-hmm. And there's other out there like, oh, you're three minutes over. You made my day. You know, so, you know, granted, we run into those guys, but th- there are decent officers out there trying to do a really good job. So give them the benefit of the doubt. Treat them good. 
be professional about it. And you're probably going to walk away with a good experience. And maybe walk away with a hundred dollar gift card in your pocket for getting that clean inspection. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Chris, thanks for coming on here tonight. Thanks everybody for listening and watching. If you have any additional questions, um, go to the CVSA website. Uh, They have some flyers there. They have some checklists there that you can print off or have on your phone to reference as you're doing your pre and your post trips. Take Jimmy's advice, maybe visit, stop in at a TA along the way and get a free break inspection. Get that stuff, you know, handled now so that next week when this thing starts uh, on Sunday, your truck's ready to go and and we're not going to have any issues. But ultimately it comes down to what type of person, what type of driver do you want to be? Do you want to do the work to be safe, to make sure that you get home safe to your family at the end of the day or at the end of the week? And that other people on the road who you're sharing the road with gets home safe to their families as well. If you guys have any questions, please reach out. Chris is happy to help. Bill, Shar, all kinds of knowledgeable people at our office that, that'll talk to you, answer your questions, and make sure that you're all ready to go. Chris, did you have, looks like you have one more thing to say. Yeah, uh, a couple of things. Don't call Bill. He's on vacation for the next week. So uh, <laughs> he's eating gummy bears out in Colorado, I heard. Uh, but uh, also part of your brake testing is doing the brake bleed down or the lab test. So make sure you guys are doing that before next week, too, to make sure that all your valves are working properly and that you don't have any broken springs inside of chambers. So, And if you are unaware how to do that, give me a call, shoot me a message, and I can walk you through it. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. All right, Chris, I'll see you at the office tomorrow. Everybody else, have a good night. What'd you say, Chris? I said, sounds good. It will. All right, everybody else, drive safe. Have a great night. We'll see you soon. Bye. Thanks, everyone.